The next part of the cardiovascular examination is focused on uh, the percordium and, and, the, and the cardiac functions. So um, inspection always starts our, um, our examination. So I'm just inspecting his chest, looking for any ventricular pulsations, any, um, any pulsations. Sometimes you can see the uh, point of maximal impulse so that will actually be visible in someone who doesn't have much musculature or someone who is very thin and cachectic. In this case, I don't see it pulsating. Uh, so I'm going to next palpate with the pads of my fingers. I'm going to palpate in multiple, in a, a number of different areas, starting with his right sternal border at the second intercostal, and then moving over to the left sternal border at the second intercostal space. And on the left side, I'm gonna move my fingers down from the second intercostal space down to the third and the fourth and the fifth all the while feeling for um, thrills, feeling for any heaves, what we call heaves or lifts, which are um, pulsations that, um, impulses that will bring my hand, lift my hand or my fingers up. So I'm feeling again, uh, the right sternal border, second intercostal space, that's the aortic area. Uh, the pulmonic area, which is the second intercostal space on the um, left sternal border, and then walking my fingers down to third, fourth, and fifth, which is what we call herbs point in here between the third and the fourth and the fifth intercostal space. Um, from there, I'm going to move over to the mid clavicular line in the fifth intercostal space. So stay in the same intercostal space and just walk your fingers more laterally to the mid clavicular line and feel for the point of maximal impulse. This is the apex of the heart, and here you should feel the pulsation of the, the ventricle pulsation, and it should kind of come up and tap your finger. If you can't feel it, then have the patient, and I'm going to have him kind of do this just so you can see, roll to his left, go ahead and roll to your left, and that brings the impulse down a little bit. So again, I'm just feeling once again for that impulse, and there it is. Good, and come back on your back. So that's palpation of the of the heart. We don't percuss heart borders anymore. It's um, there's too much you know in Makana there's going to be too much musculature to, to really get a good palpation of the heart. Uh, in women the breast tissue gets in the way, so the heart borders aren't generally percussed anymore. The next step is auscultation of the cardiac, uh, and we're going to auscultate over those same areas that we did when we were um, palpating. I'm going to start uh, with my bell, or excuse me, I'm going to start with the diaphragm. And then I'm going to move through the bell and do the same motions over with the bell. So second intercostal space on the right, on the left, down to herbs point, inch your stethoscope inch by inch down the third, the fourth, and the fifth, and then over towards that mitral valve, the apex of the heart, the fifth intercostal space in the midclavicular line. All the while you're, you're listening for murmurs, you're listening for normal S1, S2, any um, extra sounds like an S3, S4, or a split S2. A split S2 can be normal or it can also be abnormal. A normal split S2 is uh, pronounced when the patient is um, inhaling. So if you have the patient take a big, deep inspiration, you might hear a split S2, which is the sound of the pulmonic and the aortic valve closing separately. Usually they close together to form um, S2. If there is a little bit of a split there, uh, because the pressure's in the, in the um, lungs when you take a deep breath uh, in, then they'll close slightly um, behind each other and you'll hear, uh, you'll hear it as two separate beats instead of one solid beat. Next, I'm going to have Makana sit up, right? And I'm going to listen again, uh, paying special attention, paying special attention, sorry, my hands are cold, Makana. Paying pe special attention to that um, left herbs point, so the left intercostal space um, in the second, third, and fourth, and then also down into that mitral area too. Lean forward for me. Good, and listening again for uh, the soft aortic insufficiency murmurs that may be apparent only when the patient's leaning forward. Very good. Good, go ahead and lean back. That concludes our cardiac exam.